We're going to talk about the five most common winter illnesses and the five easy ways to prevent them. Uh, Lindsay McInerney, uh, an infection prevention nurse at North Kansas City Hospital, is here. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, these are some things that everyone, you know, may not know about. We know about the flu and like cover. You, you know, we used to not. We used to cough and sneeze in our hands, and now we do it in the crook of our arm, right? Absolutely. But we're going to go a little more in depth. Take us through. Uh, some of these. First, let's talk about the five most common winter illnesses. So typically what we see this time of year, which we've all heard about, is the flu and the common cold. Right. And then there's also those GI viruses that people... Which people call the flu, but it's not the flu. Exactly. It's not the flu. That's where you have the abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Right. And then there's yeah. also strep throat, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of that abrupt onset of sore throat, headache, abdominal pain. And that's a virus as well, right? Streptococcus? You can actually treat that with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Oh, antibiotics. I'm sorry. I'm right. sorry. sorry. Correct. So it's, a, so it's not a virus. It is not a virus. And See, that's why I'm not in the medical board. I should just <laughs> ask the questions rather than making a leading statement. All right, and last but not least, good old bronchitis. Bronchitis. So that cough, that soreness in your yeah. chest, um, usually doesn't need treatment either, just rest and fluids. Unless you have a history of like pneumonia or something. Then you, then you want to seek yeah. medical attention. All right, so now let's talk about the things that we should do to keep from getting some of these that are spread through germs or viruses or bacteria. So the number one way to spread the uh, prevent the spread of any germs uh -huh. is by hand hygiene. So we talk about hand washing with soap and water or uh -huh. using the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Uh -huh. So here we have the soap which is a dial soap, and that's good to wash your hands with, right? How long should you wash your hands under hot water? At least 20 seconds. You wanna make sure you cover all surfaces of your hands, get your fingernails, thumbs, and wrists, but also when you're done washing and rinsing, you wanna make sure you get your hands completely dry. With a towel that hasn't been used before, right? Right. If you're in a public place, you use those paper towels, but yeah. wet hands can actually transfer germs more easily uh -huh. than dry hands. You wanna make sure you get them completely dry. What about the uh, CD uh, gas station uh, bathroom that has that towel that goes in a loop? Should we use that? If that's no. all you've got. <laughs> but it's important to get the moisture off your hands because what does that breed more bacteria if it's right. wet? Right, if your hands are wet. Gotcha. All right, you say also use lotion. Yes. Why so use lotion? You want to use lotion to keep that barrier on mm -hmm. your skin. I um, mean, you know, our hands get very dry after we're washing them so many times during this season. So use that lotion to keep that barrier, keep those germs away as well. Gotcha. Uh, what's, what's next on our list? The pen. The pen. Just an idea to maybe throw your own pen in your purse. You know, you go to the doctor's office or uh -huh. maybe you're at the store writing a check or signing your credit card receipt and you're using that pen that everybody else has been using. And they could have... All kinds of germs on it. Yeah. So at the very least, sanitize your hands after you use the pen. I would never have thought about pen. that. And then sanitizers have gotten a bum rap lately because uh, they've kind of affect the immune system to some degree. But are they a good thing to use? They are. They're readily available. Um, you know, you can throw one in your purse, have one in your car after you've gone to that gas station and you've pumped gas and you've touched that handle that everyone else has been touching. Um, mm -hmm. You can just easily use that hand sanitizer. Last but not least, we need to use the proper cleaner when we're doing our homes or cars or whatever. And why should it have uh, a bleach in it? Bleach is the best substance to kill things like those GI viruses, the norovirus. Um, so it's effective against that germ. So you want to make sure that whatever you're using to clean is effective against that germ. And when we go to the store and we pick up Clorox wipes, we tend to think those are bleach, but these are actually bleach free. Oh. So this is not as good. So you want to make sure. We need one that does have bleach in. And it doesn't take a whole lot of bleach, does it? No, it's like one to ten parts bleach to yeah. water. Well, so what about Lysol, though? Because when I got the GI, my mom always sprayed Lysol around the house. You can. It's just sometimes those of us that have asthma or respiratory yeah, yeah, yeah. issues, the spray. But it doesn't do as much to kill a virus or a germ as a bleach base does. Correct. Interesting. Let's give it up for Lindsay.